for this next part I'm going to walk you guys through checking your head for warpage and also resurfacing. This could save you hundreds of dollars at the machine shop and it really only cost me these two items were probably about 15 bucks together I think they were like six seven bucks a piece it was like 10 bucks for the can of spray adhesive 10 bucks in sandpaper and I think the, the finished plywood uh, was, I spent about 30 bucks on that um, but ends up gonna save me a couple hundred bucks at the machine shop and I actually get a flatter surface all right uh, the, the the specs for this engine they recommend between a point zero two and a point zero three I'm gonna be a stickler for measurements and I'm gonna get down to the zero zero one five there I don't know if you can see it get the camera to zoom in there we go that's the one I'm going down to which is roughly 10 times flatter than factory specifications and I'm doing it all with blocks of wood and some sandpaper literally surface sand this with maybe some four four to six hundred grit spray it down with the spray adhesive put a piece of paper face down flip it over on there smooth it out from the centers and that's about it and this is the process All right, and the three grits I'm using is 120, 220, and this one is 320. It's a cast iron block, so we don't really need to go any, any higher than that. I'm going to wipe some oil along the surface. We don't want to be removing too much material. And we're going to start with our coarsest one. One thing that we do want to notice is we want to visualize our low spots. Where you see no gasket, you know, or black material around the holes, those are the high spots. The low spots are what still have the black around it. So we're going to focus on areas that are clean because we want to take down the high spots. So on this one, the clean spots seem to be here. So we're going to focus here, and then we're going to go this way, and then you want to go this way as well. All right, so. And it's literally just a bunch of this. My block has these little notches on it for the head alignment. It could be a pain on some engines, but you just work your way around them. Keep it moving. It's a cast iron block, so it's not going to remove a lot of material quickly. So have some patience. Back and forth, you can apply a decent amount of pressure. And I can see that I'm not really doing anything over here, so I know that's still a low spot. And I can still see gouges around the outside of this combustion chamber, so that's still a low spot. And I just still need some more work. Thing to do once in a while, take the, one of the other sandpapers, rub them together. It just helps the paper last a little bit longer. All right, another good thing to do: paper towels nearby, and it just replaces the oil on the surface from time to time because it gets impregnated with the particles of the iron that you're shaving off, and then it just takes longer to get the material off. Fresh oil on there. Alright, I'm gonna even hit it with this for another couple more passes with this higher, well, lower grit paper. More abrasive. Okay, until still tell that that's a low spot there. Looks pretty decent though. You can tell this is a high spot. So, focus here for a second. And then come around. 
Try and level out the high spot to that low spot. Carry it all the way. Diagonal. Back and forth. going to be going to the next grit again wipe away this residual oil it's impregnated with the larger particles just take more time to sand higher you go up you kind of you want to go more back and forth less less focus on certain areas this is more about getting the whole thing level low spot here you can tell by these buff marks still a couple low spots we're getting a lot better though because that was the largest gap between the dividers okay. let me switch to switch up to the 320 more oil Now this part, we're going to check our clearances, that's what these are for. You want something with a nice, clean, straight edge, it has to be a machined edge, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to just cross-check different measurements and we're going to try and slide these feeler gauges underneath. We know we have a couple of low spots, so what we do is check those first. And we wanted our 0015 gauge. We know that that's a low spot, so let's try this. Okay. You don't want to push down too hard. Look at that. Nothing, the whole way down. Okay, so that's actually not bad at all. That is a very good measurement. Okay, and the other measurement we wanted to check was between these two combustion chambers. That was the other low spot, you know, area of concern. So let's see what we get. Hold on. Let's see if we can get this thing to balance. That's what I normally like to do because when you poke it, you'll see it move. And if not, it'll go right under. Oh, and look at that. All right, so let's try coming down the wall a little more. Just barely. Just barely. But now mind you, I told you this is almost 10 times flatter than what the factory recommends. So that is actually a very, very good flatness. So we can actually keep checking our measurements all the way down. We know that these areas were pretty much flatter, but that's how we check for warpage. Nothing. Nope. Okay. Now a little more. Nothing. 
All right. Let's check between all the combustion chambers. Oh, it just barely goes under right here. So we have a slight low spot there. Or maybe it's just the lean of this. So let me press down a little bit. Okay, so it's not as bad. It's still getting caught. So we know that that's our measurement. That's a very good measurement. And that right there is how you deck and hone a block in about 15, 20 minutes. And cost me a whole of maybe about 50, 60 bucks instead of three, four, five hundred. Depends on where you go. But, and still got flatter than they would have. Hashtag for that.